We want to uh, determine the Kelvin ship wake angle. Uh, everybody's familiar with the fact that when a ship moves across a body of water, it produces a V-shaped wake behind it. And the question that we're asking is, what is that angle? So we're going to be looking at one half that V angle, whatever that angle is. So we're looking from the, the center line to the outer bound of, of the wake. That's the angle we're, we're, we're after. Now to do this, uh, we're going to assume that we're in conditions of deep water. And the deep water means that the, there's two water velocities involved. A group velocity, which we'll get into here in a second, and a phase velocity. And the group velocity is one half the phase velocity. So here I'm showing a wave group uh, between these two vertical parallel lines. Here's the center of the group. And I've marked a particular wave hump right here. Now down below here, I have the same thing, but since I wouldn't be able to reproduce this very well, I'm leaving out the actual wave, but I am leaving a little x corresponding to that wave there. So this group now is moving with the group velocity, and these waves in here are moving with the phase velocity. So now if I move the group, imagine the group wave propagating, and it propagates this far, the phase velocity will propagate twice as far. The group velocity is one half the phase velocity or the phase velocity is twice the group velocity. So the distance the group moved this from the end here to here, this side to that side, the phase velocity has moved all the way across because this is, I picked this as being one half. The phase velocity is given by this expression, the square root of the acceleration due to gravity would be 9.8, roughly 9.8 meters per second squared, the, times the wavelength of the water wave, wavelength of the water wave divided by 2 pi. And again, this is deep, deep water. And I just want to put down here that the phase velocity is two times the group velocity. Up here I had the group velocity is one half the phase velocity. I'm saying the same thing. This fact of the group velocity being one half the phase velocity is what comes into play in coming up with this angle. Okay, so if we just take a look at this, I just want to point out to you we're using a diagrammatic approach and we're going to use what I like to think of as a neat trick. Now, it's too complicated to draw accurate diagrams on the board, so I'm going to rely upon uh, some charts. So if we look at the first chart here, okay, so here we are looking at the first chart. You can see our ship Here's the Kelvin wake, and what we want to do is find out what this angle theta is here. Um, we're going to use the fact that longer wavelength water waves travel faster than shorter wavelength water waves. And what we're basically doing is if, uh, if you take a look at this book, Whitham, linear and nonlinear waves. He has a procedure in there on this page. It's not exactly what I'm going to show you, it, it, but it is um, an extension of, of his procedure to find out what that angle is using a diagram. So if we move over here to this next one, so here we're going to be to begin the process of figuring out what that angle is. Understand that um, we have a ship in the past, that's the then position. And when the ship was at that then position, it produced water waves. The ship 
we now have it over here at this now position. And what we're saying is that there were waves, and we're going to temporarily look at the phase velocity. We're going to say that some waves actually kept up with the ship. So here is a set of ring of waves that are traveling at different speeds. The outermost one, which kept up with the ship, is traveling at 100% the ship velocity. This one in here is traveling with 60% of the ship velocity, and so on. So we have wave phase velocity rings in 20% increasing increments moving out from where the ship was at time then compared to where it is now. And so we're, uh, and I want to emphasize that we're showing only rings at time now produced when the ship was at position then. That was an earlier time. Over here, I'm repeating the phase velocity that we talked about over there. And so when uh, we have a phase velocity that's 100% of the uh, ship velocity, that ring kept up with the ship. We're not saying that that actually happens. We're just using that uh, to put together a story. And that's where what I refer to as the neat trick comes in. And uh, the, the wavelength of the water waves on the ring for the 20% of the ship velocity is going to be less than the wavelength of the waves for the waves that were traveling at 100% of the ship velocity. They are the ones that kept up with the ship. So now we'll come over to here. Okay? All right. What we're looking at here now is the 20% case. And what I've done is I've drawn a line from where the ship is currently that's tangent to that ring. I can do that for all the other rings too. So for example, for this one here, it would look something like that. Now if we come over here, I've continued, I've continued drawing those tangent lines to the different rings. So we have one here, the green one is for the 20% one, the, the bluish or purple one going out a ways, then the red one, then the orange one, and finally uh, this last one here. Uh, I'm showing that one just off a little bit from, from the ring. Now, so we have, again, the wave, these rings are in 20% increments of the ship velocity. And what I've done now is I've put a dot in representing the group velocity. The group velocity is what the, the waves in the group are what you see. And the group velocity is one half the, uh, the phase velocity. So where the group actually is, remember the, the, the phase velocity I'm showing here, that, that's, that's just a drawing trick. What you will actually see are the groups of the waves. And so I've put a dot at the midpoint of all of those lines. So we have the tangent line to the circle, take for example the orange one, and then halfway along that orange line I draw a dot. That represents where the group is. So when I look back from the ship, all of the results from the group waves are going to be within this circle. So you can see I'm starting to form an angle here that we're going to determine in a little bit. So the, uh, those midpoints, they define a circle. And you can work out the geometry exactly. And you can convince yourself that, that those midpoints all fall on, on a circle. But I'm just trying to use this diagrammatic approach here to show you 
that they do fall on a, on a circle. And we could fill more in, but we're just going to uh, stick with that. So now, if we come over to here, we want to determine some distances. Now, the, um, again, the group velocity is one half the phase velocity. So for the phase, this uh, sort of imaginary phase keeping up with the ship, uh, the group velocity would actually fall midway between where the ship is and this point back here. And you can determine that you now have a circle and you can sketch in what the radius of that circle is. So this bar represents a dimensionless pa uh, parameter representing the radius of that circle. I know that whatever uh, the distance from this point to here is, it's the same as the distance from this point to here. And of course, then the radius is one half that, that distance. So I'm marking out four different lengths that make up the distance from here all the way to here. So we've established a scale along the horizontal axis based on the radius of that circle. So now if we come over to here, where all we're doing is we're drawing in a tangent line to that circle from where the ship is now. So that is the maximum extent of the waves. Again, the waves aren't really where I show these phase velocity rings because the group has to get there. The group travels at one half the phase velocity. And I showed you where the groups are for the different, um, these imaginary phase velocity rings. And so if you're at this point here, this would be half of the Kelvin ship wake angle. So if we come over here now, I've put the ship back in where it, uh, where we could consider it to be. We have this radius, some length, and then we, we have three distances from the center of the circle to where the ship is. Actually, this ship, sh this ship position is actually back here. That's, that's a mistake. That ship does not belong there. It belongs back here. But we have these, these distances. So now we can figure out what the angle is. These are all represent the same length. So we can say this angle theta is the arc sine of this distance over this, 1 over 3. And that works out to be approximately 19.47 degrees. So we found the angle. The exact angle is the arc sine of 1 over 3, and we're approximating it by 19.47. And of course, the full angle of the wake would be uh, twice that value. So kind of putting it all together here now, again, this ship is in the wrong spot here. It should be back here. Uh, we've put in a true mathematical representation of a Kelvin wake attached to the ship at the now position, and we're showing that that wake is in fact bounded by that line, and that line has this angle theta, which we already went over. So that is the deep water case. I just want to quickly say a little bit about the shallow water case because uh, it is interesting. Are we okay? So in the shallow water case, the phase velocity is roughly equal to the group velocity. So as the phase velocity approaches the group velocity, we want to ask what happens. Now this diagram is even more difficult to draw, but I think you'll see that the effect is clear, that as the phase velocity approaches the group velocity. 
I would now be drawing my dots for the group velocity very close to the end of those triangles that I had in, in the previous figure. And I think you can see that we're approaching an angle that's going to be close to, to 90 degrees. Uh, there is an example that you can look at if you're interested in, in, the, in the shallow water case. So we just deviated there a little bit from the uh, deep water case. So if we come down to here now, okay, um, the Kelvin wake angle can be determined through a simple diagrammatic approach for deep water, and we found that half angle to be the arc sine of 1 over 3, or 19.47 degrees approximately. Now, a detailed analysis would show that the wake angle as a function of to be a function of uh, ship dimensions, speed, turning rate, water depth. Um, but I just want to point out that's another story perhaps for a later time. And if you're interested in reproducing the exact wake, you can take a look at this book. Stoker, Water Waves. And uh, it gives a very, very good derivation of expressions that will allow you to uh, plot out a, a true, weak, true, true wake. So in summary, if we come over here, we were able to show that all of the extents of, from the group velocity, all those points fell on a circle. So the maximum extent of that circle would represent the um, Kelvin wake angle, the half angle, if you want to call it that, what I'm calling theta here. And that theta is the arc sine of 1 over 3. Again, here's one unit here, 1, 2, 3 units here, 1 over 3. And that angle is 19.47 degrees. And so that is a simple way to look at how to get the Kelvin wake angle.